Isaiah 54, starting at verse 11, says, O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, which means precious stones. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second to show you what that's really saying. No matter what life has done to any of us, no matter what emotional, mental scars, no matter what setbacks, no matter what losses, whatever. What God is saying is when he gets through with us, we're going to come out smelling like a rose, y'all. People that looked at, it, at us out the corner of our eye like, mm, check them out. Mm, that's a mess. When, we, when God gets through with us, they're going to be like, Oh, is that? I would never have known. Look at them. God will beautify. That's what he means when he says, beauty for ashes. There's a song that says, he'll give beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. And he does exactly that. That's from Isaiah 61. Beauty for ashes. That's what he wants to do with each one of his people. Each one of his little babies. He wants to give us beauty as we exchange and receive his beauty in exchange for our ashes. Hmm. That's something. And it's a miracle that God does that. It's, it's a beautiful miracle to experience. Let's go on. Verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. That's the only way God's going to establish you. I don't know if you've ever seen a person who's been in a car accident or has come back from war and they've lost limb, they've lost some of who they are, psychologically they're wounded, emotionally they're wounded, physically they're wounded, scarred, marred, and just a mess. And they have to learn to come back and function again. Some have to learn to function without a limb and then function with an artificial leg, an artificial limb. So what ends up happening is we, we come from the front lines of life. And God has to put us back together again. And some of us can't see it happening. Like the soldier who knows he will never grow another arm. He'll never grow another leg. Some of them can't deal with the artificial leg. It's too painful. Some of them can't deal with the artificial arm or hand. For whatever reason, there are some times you just can't deal with the artificial. But see, this is what I love about God. Whatever you've lost in war, God will regenerate. He will give you the real thing, and it'll be better than what you lost. So if you had a little confidence when you were young, hmm, if you were able to love when you were young, if you were patient when you were young, now that you're all scarred up, you've lost all of it. You almost don't care if you love again or not. Hmm. Mm -hmm. you've lost your zeal for life you've lost your fight you go to God for healing and when God gets through with you you're going to have fight you never had you're going to have confidence you never had you're looking at the example right here I never had this confidence 
It comes straight from God, from his healing. I was an emotional cripple and God, the potter, put me back together again. Hmm. Oh my goodness. See, God will validate you. God will reassure you. God will strengthen you on the inner man. God will give you all kind of witty ideas and witty inventions, Lynn. God will give you a boldness you never had, Peter. God will give you a contentment that you never had, Rashad. I mean, I'm telling you, God is so able to replace what you've lost with something so much better, so that's so far superior that you've never known before. And that's why you're able to do things you've never done before. God will take you to levels. People will look at you. I've had people say it to me. It really cracks me up because I'm like, I didn't do it. God just told me. And they were talking about, oh, you're, that's genius. How did you come up with that? I, I didn't come up with it. I can't take credit for that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, but yeah. So God will take you, just like when I was telling Rashad, to look into Apple. Because a lot of those, the, you know, Rashad likes helping people go through their computer and help them troubleshoot. He likes doing that, solving problems. But here's the thing. What, no matter what technician I deal with, with Apple, Apple always, you can tell there's a script, a protocol they go by. These are the problems. Here's the solution. Here's another list of problems. Here's another list of solutions. You got this problem and this problem. Whether those solutions don't work, here's another. So everything is categorized compartmentalized every solution every problem every combination of problems and I can tell by the way I hear them referring to something on their end well see I know they must train their people to do that and they have their manual right in front of them so they don't have to be all that knowledgeable they just have to know how to read print <laughs> So what I'm trying to tell you is what God can do with Rashad in that kind of a career is not only teach him how to follow a script, teach him how to follow protocol, teach him how to compartmentalize according to the manual. I'm making a point, y'all. What God can do is take you so far beyond that Rashad can be showing them, I tried this and that worked. That's not in the manual. Oh, really? Oh, that's genius. And he can sit there and say, oh, yeah, God told me. There's the witness. And as he gives God glory with everything God teaches him, with witty inventions, God promotes Rashad to higher levels of living as well as in the spirit realm. As Peter comes out of his shell and he allows me to pluck his feathers, Peter will be a powerhouse, y'all. You talk about a rock. Peter was a name, Peter, by happenstance. I believe that was divine. And what I want you to know 
is God will take the very thing that you're weakest at. God will take the very thing that you're least confident in. God will take the very thing you're most insecure about. And those will be your strengths, your signatures. Oh, my goodness. Did you meet Peter? Oh, that man, he preached the walls down. Oh, my goodness. Everybody was at the altar, even the pastor. Did you hear that message? Why? Healing. God doesn't exchange beauty for ashes. See, I can see potential that you guys don't see in yourselves. You ever hear the uh, term ball busting B? Yeah. That's what I see Lynn as against the gates of hell. No hesitation. No concern about what people think. Just march in, state her business, and handle her business. Carry out her assignment. Pay out! See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. See, there are going to be things that God has to undo in us and replace in us, remold, remake, restore. Go with me to Joel chapter 2, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare thy people, O God, and say unto thine heritage, say unto thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therein. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren, desolate, and his face toward the east sea, with his hinder part toward the uttermost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he had done great things or horrible things. Verse 21, fear not, O land, be glad, rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree, the vine tree do yield her strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you, here's the bottom line, the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. That's inner satisfaction. And praise the name of your God that he had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And when you look up the word prophesy in the Bible, a lot of times it's not just foretelling, foretelling, and being a seer. It's also telling the word. All right. And upon all servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. But I want you to hear that God will restore to you all your damaged parts, all your broken areas, all your areas of disappointment, failure, where you fell short. Some of you don't have scars. You just fell short of where you think you should be now. God will do all of that when he pours his spirit out on you. So ask him for constant inner healing, constant deliverance, constant cleansing, uproot that crap, get it out at the root, and infilling of his Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, one-on-one -on -one experience with God, supernatural encounters, and lessons that God wants to teach you. Supernatural revelation. Hmm. Yeah, I'm telling you, God's got big dreams for you guys, much bigger than you have. But I say to you what God said to Abraham. Look up, look around you. All this is before you. As far as your eye can see, that have I given you as far as your eye. See, God can see. I mean, God's got far sight, baby. He's got high sight. He's got, he can see what nobody else can see because he's all knowing and he's everywhere at one time. Now, what I ask you to ask yourself, is how far can you see? I was looking at a piece of land in Jess Ranch when I was driving my car yesterday. I was looking at the land that's still bare. In this community, there's a big old plot of land. And I looked at that and I said, Lord, that's smack dab in the center of this community, the next community, and the big rich community. All right there, smack dab in the middle of us. We can drive in a we can drive from each other's community. We're all right here, packed up in one central spot. Why can't we have a beautiful community center that you built? Why can't we have a place where people can get counseling, where people can get prayer? where people who are lonely can hang out together and shoot pool and play cards and play Monopoly, play Scrabble, play chess, play whatever games are out there that I don't even know about. And while they're playing the game, singing praises to the Lord. And who knows the Lord, you know, you can walk down on everybody and boom, it's a supernatural encounter all of a sudden. From game to heaven. Just like that. Why can't you create something for the lonely, for the forgotten, for your people, for your ministers, for everybody to be able to gather in your name for fun, for entertainment, for love fest, for ministry, for deliverance, for healing, for inner healing, for impartation of the Holy Spirit, for impartation of gifts, exercise. Just my mind started going through the stratosphere, coming up with ideas what I could do with that piece of land. And I could have it built as a house, as a residence, so that nobody could tell me what I could or could not do with it. 
I mean, I got big ideas, big goals, big dreams. Have certain afternoons where they bring a group of people in that are ex uh, inmates. And they're really trying to get their lives together. And we sit and we go through inner healing groups. We have group sessions, group therapy sessions with the word. Ah! What could, I mean, like I said, as far as your eye can see, God said, that have I given you. I'm willing to see far, y'all, real far. Are you? And I leave you with that. Seek God for everything he has for you. Don't have your picks. Be open to all of it. Amen? God bless you.